Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Today we are going to continue with lesson 4, chemical formula. We are still in chapter 1, matter. So let us begin. Today we are going to determine the empirical and molecular formula from mass composition or combustion data. Chemical formula is a simplified way to write a compound. You can write CO2SO4 instead of writing copper sulfate. If we write copper sulfate, it's going to be long and it's difficult to do the mathematical calculations, formulations and all. The subscript thing is a small number that is written on the bottom right of the element. More examples are given. You can write NaCl for salt and C2H3O2 for vinegar. Let's look at the definition of empirical formula. It indicates which elements are present in the simplest whole number ratio of their atoms in a molecule, whereas molecular formula shows the exact number of atoms of each element in the smallest unit of a substance. Therefore, we can say molecular formula equals to empirical formula multiplied by N. So what is H2O? Is it empirical formula or molecular formula? H2O is both empirical formula and molecular formula because the N is 1. When the N is 2, you are going to have double atom in the molecular formula. For example, hydrogen peroxide, the empirical formula is HO and the molecular formula is H2O2. Sometimes, Two molecules can have the same empirical formula but a different molecular formula because the N is different. For example, benzene and ethyne, the molecular formula is C6H6 and the ethyne would have C2H2. Al-an, if the sofha Let's do example 1.6 question 1. We're going to calculate the empirical formula from the masses of constituents. We are given 18.3 grams sample of hydrated compound containing 4 grams of calcium, 7.1 grams of chlorine and 7.2 grams of water. How do we calculate its empirical formula? Okay, firstly, we construct a table and write down the masses for all constituent, calcium, chlorine, and H2O, water. And then we calculate the number of mole, whereby for calcium, 4 divided by 40, we get 0 0.1. 7.1 divided by 35.5, we get 0 0.2. 7.2 divided by 18, we got 0 0.4. And then the next step is we try to find the simplest ratio. The simplest ratio can be found by dividing all number of mole with the simplest number of mole. The smallest number of mole is 0 0.1. So we use this. We will get 1, 2 and 4 respectively. This is not yet the final answer. We must write properly. The empirical formula for the compound is CaCl2 dot 4H2O. 
Okay, let's do example 1.6, question 2. Now we are going to calculate the empirical formula from percentage composition by mass. Vitamin C is composed of 40.92% carbon, 4.58% hydrogen, and 54.5% oxygen by mass. Given the molar mass is 176 gram per mole, determine its empirical formula and molecular formula. Okay. After you have constructed the table, write the mass of each element and find the number of mole. The smallest number of mole here, if you can see, is 3.41. So you divided all the number of mole with 3.41 and you found that for hydrogen, the simplest ratio is 1.33. This is 4 over 3, if you notice. So we are going to find a factor which can be used to create and construct a whole number here. So we choose three, we got three, four, and three. So the empirical formula for ascorbic acid, vitamin C, is C3, H4, and O3. The next step would be finding N. N is equals to molar mass divided by empirical formula mass. So given in the question, 176 divided by 88 equals to 2. The N is 2. So you multiply all the elements in vitamin C with 2. And you will get the molecular formula of vitamin C is C6H8O6. Next question is calculating the empirical formula from elemental analysis or combustion data. A 1 gram sample of compound A was burnt in excess oxygen to produce 2.52 grams of carbon dioxide and 0.443 grams of H2O. We need to determine the empirical formula of the compound. We need to understand that the sample contains element carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Firstly, we need to find the number of mole of carbon dioxide given to you is 2.52 grams, so divide it with the molar mass of carbon dioxide. For one mole of carbon dioxide, there is one mole of carbon atom. So, in 0.0573 moles of carbon dioxide, how many mole of carbon atom there is? There is also 0.0573 moles of carbon atom. Next step is to find the mass of carbon. We can do that by multiplying the number of mole of carbon with 12, the molar mass of carbon. So we get 0.6876 grams. Now we are going to find the mass of hydrogen. Firstly, we need to find the number of mole of water because hydrogen is in the water. And the mass for water is given, which is 0 0.443 divided by 18. We got 0 0.0246 moles of water. One mole of water consists of two mole of hydrogen atom. So, if we got 0 0.0246 moles of water, how many moles of hydrogen atom do we have? Since it is 2 mole of hydrogen atom in one molecule of water, we have to multiply the number of moles of water with 2. 
0.0492 mole of hydrogen atom we got. Next, we can find the molar mass of hydrogen by multiplying it with 1. This part is a little bit tricky because it has to use your critical thinking. The mass of carbon is 0 0.6876 and the mass of hydrogen is 0 0.0492. How do we get the mass of oxygen? We got the mass of the whole sample given in the question, which is 1 grams. So we need to find the mass of oxygen by deducting the mass of carbon and hydrogen from the mass of the whole sample. So we get 0 0.2632 grams of oxygen. Excuse my simplicity there. Then we can insert the mass in the table. So put 0 0.688, 0 0.0492, 0 0.263 and find the number of mole. The simplest number there is... Um, 0 0.0164 the smallest number of moles so we use that to get the simplest ratio so carbon would have 3.49 hydrogen 3 oxygen 1 the carbon is 3.49 it's around 3.5 so, how are we going to get a whole number? We need to find a factor. So, we multiply it by 2. So, 3.5 times 2 is 7. 3 uh, multiplied by 2 is 6 and 2. So, the empirical formula for this sample is C7H6O2. So, that's all for lesson 4. Thank you and see you again next time. Assalamualaikum. Bye.